Let's talk about dating. Is it becoming less and less common? And are we to blame? Can our hosts tell whether these stories are fake or just Florida? And music is ending a band. What would the host's final playlist be? Find out this all and more today on The College Voice. Welcome back to another episode of The College Voice. How are we feeling today? I'm good. feeling great. I'm good. good. Um, what did you guys think about the 70 degrees last weekend? It was, it was, it was great. Yeah, but, but now it's I was, to snow. Yeah, I was yeah. always <laughs> understanding like this is temporary. Like don't get used to it. Don't get too happy. It's temporary. Yeah, yeah so are you glad it happened or do you wish it wanted? Um, I'm glad it happened. It gave me a little taste of what's to come. <laughs> it made me sad because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it's so close yet so far away. And like spring mm -hmm. break is so close yet so far True. away. Yeah. I feel like everything's just like slightly out of reach. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like so yeah. sad. It's coming, y'all. We just gotta wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about love at first sight. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about the idea of seeing someone and just automatically falling in love? I've never been, you know, I love Love at First Sight in a cute little rom-com movie. I love a rom-com. But in real life, I feel like Love at First Sight doesn't exist. Because then, agree. how do you define love? Yeah. <laughs> I agree. It's only in the movies, I feel like. Um, I feel like you can look at someone and be like, I think that person's attractive. Yeah, but I'm right. not going to be like, I'm going to marry that <laughs> man. Like, it's not like, the, I feel like it's only in the movies that you ever get to like you see the sparks fly and the fireworks go off like that's not something that because happens because if life. you're basing it on love at first sight isn't that falling under like you're just basing them on your yeah. looks or like what else can you base it off of exactly that's what we have to differentiate is that the word differentiate yeah. <laughs> love and lust it's less when you're just thinking about appearance, like, ooh, they fine, which is okay, you know, realistically, people do that. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> was it love? Absolutely not. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. When a parent, specifically like a mother, holds her child the first time, oh, would different. you consider that love at first sight? That's different. I mean, they've been well, growing them for nine months. Yeah, yeah. I would say they've been they loving them connected. for nine months. Like, like, you do grow a connection. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I've heard. <laughs> you grow what about it. with pets? Like, going to pick out a puppy and knowing mm -hmm. That's the one. Do you, you think, think that? it's cute, yeah, and I then you grow a connection. You pick it off of how, like, because I went and I was like, "That's a cute puppy right there," and that's yeah. how I got my puppy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just think I don't think it's like an accurate thing. I, I, I do. You guys know anyone that's ever married someone from love at first sight? No, no. not at all. Mm -hmm. I think it has like a <laughs> fair pay. I feel like you can be like, "Oh, I saw them and I was really attracted to them," and then mm -hmm. we fell in love. Mm -hmm. But like right. you're not gonna be like we were in love when I first but, saw ooh, them. Oh, I loved him the moment I saw him. You lying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. Lying. that would make life so much easier, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like people make that up a lot, though. Like mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I was in love. I knew it was him as soon as I saw him. Like bull crap. That sounds like middle <laughs> yeah. school. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the people in middle school being like, oh, I saw him in the hallway, and now we're in love. Like yeah. that's not real. Aww. Well, what about if it's like you've been talking to this person online for a couple months and it's like the first time you're seeing them? Yes or no? You still have already yeah. established a connection through talking with them. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all, I think, agree that we don't believe in love at first sight. But next we're going to be discussing dating and why aren't we going on dates anymore? Alencia? That's a great question, Anna. That's a great question. And I would love to know because I, I feel like have y'all seen the movie Hitch with Will Smith and um, Kevin James? 
and he's like coaching him on how to go out with girls and how to date, blah, blah, blah. People don't date like they didn't hitch no more. And you can blame it on the fact that we're young and we're broke, but those are excuses to me. Because there are plenty of things that you could be doing, especially on campus, you know? Oh, I agree. Why aren't people going on dates, Taylor? Um, what, fear of <laughs> commitment, um, social anxiety. We don't know how to talk to each other in person. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we really social don't. media really caused mm -hmm. the big, like, Mm -hmm. in this. Yeah. yeah, I was talking about this the other day. I was standing in Starbucks and there was this cute guy and I was like, why is he not coming up to me right now and just asking me on a date? But I was like, why are you not? But that's the thing. Like, the other way, I could have went up to him and been like, exactly. yo, you're cute. But like, it's just that social interaction. I'm like, I think fear of rejection too. Mm -hmm. So like, it's just like, I don't know. I don't want to talk to them. They should be talking to me. I feel like, yeah, social media has played the biggest role in this because people just slide into the DMs now. They don't yeah. actually slide into the actual person anymore. That's so <laughs> not <lazy>. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I, I just I didn't, that. I, 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 I have no clue what she's talking about, to be honest. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know thing. Anyways, um, so I was thinking, I was thinking about this. I think about this a lot. Because it is similar to what you just said. Like, um, oh my God. I don't Go ahead. You know what? Okay. <laughs> Personally, for me, I'm like, why would I go on a physical, in-person date with this person mm -hmm. when I can send them a step to at 12 a.m. That's saying, lazy. Good night. That's lazy. I, or send yeah. them a TikTok saying, Hey, this made me think of dating you. apps too have a big thing on it because like that's the same thing. Like I'm like I can just like talk to them on a dating app. You know, that's all about appearance, and then I get to know them, and then I'm like, Oh, you're boring, and then I stop talking to them. So, but I never like get past the talking phase. You know, I'm always just talking to them because so you just said my trigger word. <laughs> we are too old to be talking. We're too old. We're too old for that. We're too old for that. <laughs> if you want my time, you gotta take me on a date. We're dating. We're either dating or we're just friends. So, because mm. talking is a way to put a claim over somebody without having any um, responsibility or having to set expectations. So you can say you're connected to somebody without having to commit, like he said. Yeah. There's no talking. You so, know, how long I, do you need to like get to know someone before you just go on a date? The date should be you getting to know them. <laughs> That's where it should start. That's a little opinion. scary. I mean, I, how is that scary? What if they're a killer? Okay, okay. Y'all meeting in the public place. Maybe I'm not saying that. Like the crib. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you think college date dating life is crazy, wait till you find out about what we're discussing next after the break. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Thank you, dear. Well, you're very supple. It's like I was at your age. Back then, I was a sex expert. Used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control, too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... Have you had sex in this car yet? You know, real story and a fake story. Join us as our hosts play real or fake Florida. Okay, are you guys ready? Okay, let me pull up the questions. I am so ready for this. I want to see who's going to win. Okay, question number one. A Florida man, tired of all the potholes, decided to fill one in by planting a banana tree. Fake or Florida? Florida. Oh, sorry, you're supposed to call on each of us. <laughs> <laughs> both, both of you can give me your answer. I vote Florida. I say this one's fake. Wait, okay. don't forget about them. Okay, Cohen. what do you guys say over there? 
I say Florida as well. Florida. Okay, the answer is actually Florida. A banana tree? Are you kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> it didn't do anything, but. <laughs> so <laughs> everyone has one besides Valencia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, question number two. A Florida man with a small dog tried robbing a Waffle House with finger guns. Fake or Florida? Um, Florida. I feel like this is Florida. Why do I feel like I've heard about this? I think this is fake. I'm going to say Florida. Anna? Florida. Florida? Of course, it is Florida. I, yeah. say, I feel like I've heard Did about it. Did you say it. fake? I said Florida. No. Oh. Yeah. So I think every, almost everyone got a point there. Besides oh, Joe. Joe. It's okay. You'll catch up. <laughs> almost everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. That's very true. That Question number three. A drag queen in Tampa broke her ankle going down an escalator after throwing her shoe at her ex-husband. Fake. Oh, I'm going to go with fake as well. I'm going to go fake. fake. You have too many details. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one was fake. <laughs> Very fake. <laughs> Question number four. Three. A woman threatened to rob a McDonald's because they wouldn't give her one of every sauce without paying. Florida. Florida. That's Florida. Florida. That's, That's got to be Florida. Places, to be honest. <laughs> that could happen here. Yeah. That is indeed Florida. Okay. Wait, updated point three. scores. Okay, four. what is four. it? Four. Four? Who has the most right now? I think me, me and Anna. Okay, yeah. okay. There are only four, four questions left, so let's see. Question number five. A man was arrested after his crossbow accidentally went off inside a Hampton Inn and broke the glass on a vending machine. Florida. Florida. Um, Actually, this I one is fake. Uh. But I think that most definitely could happen. <laughs> Joe didn't get the answer before. No doubt. Wow. Oh. Yeah, Joe. But I did say yeah. fake. But he I did say fake. He Question number six. Yes. A young man hogtied his sister on their front lawn <laughs> because she deleted all of his progress on Call of Duty. <laughs> Not Call of Duty. Florida. <laughs> That's Florida. <laughs> What's hogtied? That's Florida. Isn't it where you like you tie your like your legs and your feet together? Yeah, they're like behind their Florida. back. Your legs and your feet, your <laughs> arms and your feet. Would it be painful? Probably. I don't know about painful. Yeah. Yeah. Uncomfortable for sure. Cruel uh, at least. Everyone voting fake or Florida? I said Florida. I said Florida. I said I said Florida. 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 This one is actually fake. Oh, oh my gosh. Every, okay. Everything in Florida is. Question seven. A man who was pulled over told the police that his shirt, which he thought was a squirrel, was eating him. <laughs> fake or Florida? Florida. It's Florida. 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 It is Florida. Last question. Last question. Five. Five. Okay. Three men set up a table and chairs in the middle of traffic to play a game of Uno. Florida. I've heard of something funny. like this. I feel, oh. Fake. I'm going to go with fake as well. I say Florida. Anna? I said Florida. I'm this scared. one is indeed Florida. I won. Yes. Yes. I won. I won. I won. I Dang won. it. I am the champion. Florida. Well, Congratulations, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm five. Okay. I may be a future resident. Who knows? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay, <laughs> let's move on to our next topic. Um, picture this, there is a global ban on all music and you have one day left to listen to any song you want in the world. Um, let's find out what our host's final playlist would be and maybe through it, find out a bit about their music tastes. So, I think for me, I'll start off. I'll join you. My first song on the playlist no. would be Happy Birthday. Really? Yeah. Why? Because even if there's no music, we're always going to have birthdays. That's true. Um, mm -hmm. oh. Let's see. Um, I don't even know. Like, this is, I'm not, a, I'm indecisive. You guys know this. So, like, I would just press shuffle and see what happens. Shuffle? You're leaving your last song up to some shuffling? Yeah. I can't just pick something. At least give us a genre. What, what about you guys? That one just is like a good, light-hearted like song. The one like the Hawaiian version. Oh so yes, yes, oh, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so definitely somewhere over the rainbow. And then I would also really like the Spins by Mac Miller, Pursuit of Happiness for like a pump up. 
Um, Fur Delicious by Fergie. So you want a little bit oh, of a everything. A little bit of everything. I just yeah. want fate to decide mine. Is that okay? I, I'm gonna guess. I feel like I'm a little morbid. I was the only thing I could think of was if the world was ending. And it was just like, oh, if you the come world over, was right? ending, you'd come over. Like, I know the That's world's not ending, but. Okay, the second song I'd want on my playlist, without a doubt, would be this German children's song oh. called Ich bin Schnappi. What is up with your like happy birthday and like? I like it simple. I like it simple. Why I do you like want it happy cool. birthday though. You want the final song? Why don't you want happy birthday? birthday? I want to celebrate my birthday. Or do you want to? Oh, you so know? we can't even sing. And personally, I don't know it in sign language, so. Hmm. You know. I don't know. This is tough. I really can't decide. Honestly, I'm being dead serious. I There's think so many one. songs yeah. in the world. Like trying to pick like a couple. I think a good one, the 10 minute version of All Too Well. I gotta listen to that at least yeah. one last time. No, definitely. Um, maybe I'm the Michael Myers theme song. Yeah. <laughs> See, that was a good <laughs> one. And why? Because that one that has that has some spice to it. That one's I fun. Mean, That's fresh. Yeah. There's just like pretty. so much music. I can't like. I like music too much. I yeah. can't even like imagine it going away because I wouldn't even know. Like what that, would I do? That I made me think need of another one, one direction in there. Yes. What? Anything one direction. Another song I would throw in there. Yeah. Um, that one song from SpongeBob where the worms dance. You have a lot of the jellyfish song. Yeah. Yes, with the boom I like it's the best day ever. Like just imagine. Oh, the best day ever is a good song. Best day ever. Coming home from school and listening to that song. Goofy Goober. Goofy Goober rocks laps. Yeah. Honestly, so SpongeBob. I work out to that song. I'm not even gonna lie. I might have to add that one to the playlist. Okay, what about like sad songs? Michael Myers theme song, right? Okay. I don't. Sad songs. Um, Ghosted by Ariana Grande. I don't know. I don't want to listen to a yeah, sad song sad. if it's one of my last songs to listen to. You know, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to know what we'll be listening to in our final days of music. Stay with us after the break as we talk about what happens when we go to our autopilot. Stay tuned. <laughs> Oftentimes, I find myself doing something totally unconsciously until I suddenly snap out of it and realize I exist. It's like my body is on auto autopilot and I am not the one behind the wheel. So I want to know, when or in what situations do you find your body going on autopilot mode? And do you think this is helpful or harmful? Hmm, that's interesting. Ooh. I think one of the ones where I always go on autopilot is when I'm like, I've been running for a while and like I'm coming up on like mile four out of five. I'm just like, okay, I just gotta like push it out like one more mile. I think that's definitely when I'm like, okay, like I just need to get it done. First of yeah. all, you run four to five miles at a time? Mm hmm Yeah. I can never do that, <laughs> honestly. Oh yeah, you're different. Mm -mm. <laughs> that's, that's I, I think when run. I run, my body is like, the opposite of autopilot. Like, yeah. I'm too conscious. <laughs> I'm conscious of my foot, like, hitting the sidewalk, so I don't mm -hmm. run. I get that. Yeah, I get it. I think I go in autopilot the most when I'm driving, which is probably the most dangerous thing in the world. Yeah. But you know, yeah. like, especially if you're taking a path that you usually take, like going to work or going home from work, and you're mm -hmm. driving and you realize you're close to home. I'm like, wow, I don't remember even what this car ride was. Yeah, it's like yeah. when you turn the corner and you know when you were a kid and, like, you knew that was the turn to go to your house. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I'm not even, like, I don't. You can drive, I was like, dang, was that a green light? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely the same way. What about you, Joe? What about you, Joe? Um, 
I don't know, I really feel I go into autopilot whenever I'm walking to and from class because it's like mm -hmm. when you take yeah. that like same route like almost every, every day, day and it's like, oh, my body just automatically knows where to go. So it's like I just zone out almost and I just go and I'm like walking and all of a sudden I'm just like wondering, how'd I get here? Yeah. <laughs> how'd I get to class? And I was like, <laughs> oh, I, I zoned out again. Oops. Oops. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, that just usually happens. Even in class, too, I go on autopilot. It's like a really boring lecture. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to, like, go in my own world for a little bit, and then I'll, like, come back. I think I find myself going on autopilot most when I'm eating. Like, eating? I'll just be eating, and then I'll mm. finish my food, and I'll be like, wait. Mm. Like, it's gone. Where'd it, like, where'd where'd it go? go? Where'd it go? <laughs> so do you guys think this is, like, a good thing or a bad thing? Mm. Maybe a bad oh. thing when like you're driving. That's probably not the best thing in the world. Yeah, but I but I feel like it just happens whenever you're doing just like a mindless task. Task. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, especially like we've said, the one that you've you're gonna custom to doing. Like you really don't have to think about it. You just know from habit. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know that it's a bad thing. I think it's definitely both. Yeah, definitely. I think both. it's both. There's times where I feel like it could be a good thing. Just like for me, like when I'm running, I'm glad that I snap out of it. I'm just mm -hmm. like, all right, we're just yeah. pushing to get it done. But then like the driving thing, I feel like could, I'm guilty of that too. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think that's a bad thing to go on autopilot for, be like, oh, I just ran a stop sign. And I didn't even process that I mm -hmm. did until after the fact. Not the best. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a good thing and both like a bad thing. Cause like in yeah. a good sense, it's like, when you're ever like you're just like bored and sometimes like it's a good way to fill the blank kind of it's like you can just zone out go on autopilot mm -hmm. and then maybe just like snap back in but maybe it's a bad thing in case like in driving for example where it's like oh I'm going autopilot and it's like how'd I get here mm -hmm. yeah but I mean it's both good both bad, both bad. maybe a bit of both so yeah. yeah I think for me it does help sometimes mm -hmm. like I have anxiety so sometimes tuning out and like not being so conscious of those things, really, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. you said. So I think maybe when you're driving, you know, maybe, maybe <laughs> you <should> try to <laughs> try to focus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Besides that, I think it's like pretty helpful mm -hmm. for the most part. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I agree. Now, as we said, going on autopilot can make us tired sometimes, and sometimes I do from boring classes. Find out how we feel about schooling after we get back. Well, I am sure we have all had a really bad teacher at some point in our career. It's one of the worst things ever because most of the time, not only does it affect what you learn, you also get punished through grades by the teacher. Should students be allowed to grade their own teacher due to some teachers being really good and some being really bad? So I know we get to do like the grading scale at the end of the semester, but what does that really do, you know? Yeah. You've already received your bad grade at that point. I know like some teachers allow you to like give yourself a grade, but if I'm being honest, I'd give myself a good grade. I would, cause mm -hmm. like they don't really know. Even pr I think based on performance versus effort, there are two completely different grades. So maybe like it'd be helpful to have two and then like a combination where you get one overall grade of something self, that know? can factor into the overall score. I agree. I think that there has to be something because it's like annoying when you have a bad teacher because you're getting punished and it's not even your fault, you know? Mm -hmm. What do yeah. you guys think? What's a deal? I, well, I think to some degree, I hate that I'm about to say this, but to some degree it's our responsibility as students to I kind of adapt to the teacher's teaching style because mm -hmm. a lot of professors teach differently, you know, and students have different needs. So depending on what class you're in, you might just have to adjust to the certain teacher's teaching style, which is annoying and frustrating sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you know those first few weeks of the semester where you're getting a feel for your professors and how yeah. they run things and how they organize their class in Canvas or Blackboard or whatever. Um, so that's one thing. But if it's like just a trash teacher, oh, we should have the utmost ability to report it. Um, I feel like there should be more channels that we can go through to speak to somebody like higher up, to be yeah. like, hey, I don't know who hired him, but get him out of here type thing, you know? No, I definitely agree. I do think like you were saying, and mm -hmm. the teachers are doing their job, and it's I think it's our duty to like, or like it's on us to like adapt, like yeah. you were saying. Because um, it's like, we are the students, they, they are the professors, like we can't, just like blow it off, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that makes I, a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but yeah. 
Because I think adapting also not only does, are you adapting to that style of, t I see both sides, but with the adapting point, like that is yeah. building like life skills because you're not right. always going to deal with people that are good. I mean, in yeah. any aspect of life. So I agree with that. It just sucks that like we're getting punished mm -hmm. with a grade that can affect our future. Yeah. yeah. I also think like a big part from what I've noticed so far is there are people who, in those big lecture classes, the professor will not know their name, but they'll be yeah. giving them grades. So they're not knowing anything about like their work ethic, work ethic you know, like what's going on outside. Mm -hmm. So I think like it does fall on the professor's responsibility to be checking in with students. Oh, 100%. Like, one of my, sorry, I, one of my professors, what I love that she does is she has us put up little table tents like in our classes oh, with everybody's <laughs> yeah with all of our names on them so like mm -hmm. we actually get to know each other in the classrooms yeah. and I have so much respect for that because I don't just feel like a student I feel like one of her students yeah. yeah and so she knows who I am she knows like what I'm capable of she knows my worth ethic and she cares about every single student because she takes the time out to like remember your name not like mm -hmm. oh let's go around the classroom one time and tell me your name like no put up a table tent every class like I generally like take the time to like keep remembering like who you are with each class what are some things that you think make a bad professor like what are some things you've dealt with that like mm. make it bad I guess. poor communication poor mm -hmm. communication um, if you don't make your expectations clear in your syllabus and then you get upset when students have questions yeah that, that's the easiest way to irritate me for mm -hmm. one of my work. irritations too is when you email them in the beginning of the week and then they don't get back to you until the day of class like I had an assignment that was due and I need work I need help on it and mm -hmm. I reached out to you and you didn't get back to me until the day that it's due that's not fair mm -hmm. yeah. that's not fair mm -hmm. another thing really quickly when they take like absurdly long to grade mm -hmm. oh, are yeah. you kidding yeah. me like, yeah. and I just feel like, especially if it's a class where we have big assignments, don't assign me another thing until I get the first thing that you graded back. Because right. how am I supposed to improve? How am I supposed to know what I did well, what I didn't, exactly. if I can't understand how you grade and what you're looking for, but you're giving me more assignments. And normally they say, I have so much to grade. Yeah, I have I five cared. other classes. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> you get paid to do this. Yeah, yeah. you get paid to do your like, job, so do it. Yeah. yeah. When, it comes, I, yeah. when yeah. it comes to grades, I also think that like, like you said, getting them back, there is like a bit of wiggle room to how much effort you can put into different assignments. Like mm -hmm. for the sake of your mental health, you don't need to stress over every single assignment. I That's agree. Some, true. Like if you know those grades, you'll be able to step back on some and not like, you know, put blood, sweat, and tears into every yeah. single thing. Yeah. What are some things that make a good teacher? <laughs> Being nice. <laughs> I guess being like understanding of like the students' needs. Yes. Being able to communicate obviously and like being clear with like your expectations and being easy to reach reach like and also, if you have questions and also like just being like understanding of like we're students we mm -hmm. have a million other things that we're doing mm -hmm. so I love that like some of my professors understand that of like I mean this isn't like I haven't personally experienced but I know some of my friends have or like they couldn't turn in an assignment and their understanding of like oh like I know what you're doing is like actually benefiting you for my class mm -hmm. so like you turning in your assignment two days later would be better than it doing it quicker and it not being as well done which I under I like that they understand that mm -hmm. me too I think we also saw like who were like the good teachers who are really mm -hmm. here for our benefit and who was just here for the job when COVID happened yeah we saw who really cared about us and who did it <laughs> for sure <laughs> So, but that's all we have for you today. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The College Voice, to follow us on Instagram at the College Voice underscore KSU. But TV2 is not finished yet. Stick around for an upcoming episode of Kent Core tonight at 9 p.m. For all other local news, stay tuned for your TV2 newscast at 6 p.m. We'll see you next week. Every one of us has a voice. And every voice has the power to shape the world. Ours is no different. Our voice is 85 years in the making. A voice that's more than 700 students strong, one of the largest in the nation. It's 10 different award-winning media partners sharing 34 outlets, all working united toward a common goal. Our voice reaches 30,000 households on TV, over 22,000 magazine readers per year, half a million newspapers, feature films and stores nationwide. 
Our voice is pride in what we do. It empowers students, emerging professionals, to ask tough questions and demand answers. We believe in our voice. We believe in its ability to change the world. And our voice makes us who we are.